Hello, my name is Bev Lenahan, and I will be your host today on The Better Part. How many Poets Laureate have you known? Well, stay tuned for an insightful interview with Casey McCormick, Cupertino's Poet Laureate for 2018 through 2019. <music> Welcome, Casey. Thank you. Well, you and I got to know one another through the uh, Cupertino Poet Laureate program. Yes. And I'm very grateful for that. And it seems like with your um, stint being 2018 and 19, you're sort of a perfect person to reflect on the role of poetry in American culture today. So give us your view on that. We'd be interested in sharing that. Sure. Well, I think the, the role of the modern poet is really informed by the nature of poets in general. Uh, you know, poets are inherently careful observers. And so mm -hmm. I think our role is to really serve as the eyes and ears and ultimately the voice of the community at large as we put into words uh, the world around us. And uh, the modern poet, though, isn't just an observer. The modern poet needs to be willing to be changed by his or her observations and record the impact of different events through our language. And I think that when we share the impact on the individual through our poems with others, we then impact the community at large. Yes, we, we certainly do. And it's sort of a personal thing, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and then it flows outward from that. Absolutely. Yes, that's for sure. Well, today we have national, state, and local poets laureate. And uh, they play an important role. What, what role do you think they are playing in these communities? And, and how, how is that important? Well, I think the Poets Laureate programs have really grown, uh, due in large part to the, the popularity of poetry increasing over the last few decades. And I think that these programs are uh, sort of a response to the demand for recognition that poetry plays in, has played in our lives for many years. Um, Poets Laureate, uh, we are largely a vol volunteers, and mm. so we <laughs> are very dedicated to not only poetry and promoting uh, the power that it can bring to individuals and communities, but also uh, we are dedicated and passionate about the communities in which we live. So it's kind of a badge of honor for communities to have a Poet Laureate because it means not only uh, is there a strong enough poetry community to carry forward the programs, but there are people who are passionate enough about their communities to represent them at the city, at the community level, at the county level, and ultimately the national level. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly in this diverse environment in which we find ourselves today, it's more important than ever, isn't it, to have these voices? Absolutely, yeah, yes. For, for sure. Well, we know that you um, brought some poetry with, with you. So um, first, let's before we do that, let's talk about um, uh, how poetry reflects art in everyday life. So I think, you know, everyday life has changed so much. Uh, it continues to change over the years. But right now, we live in this very fast-paced environment. Every person you talk to is busy and rushing from here to there. Um, and our, our attention spans have become shorter and shorter. We see a headline. It captures our interest for a few moments. And then we move on to the next one. We're used to instant gratification and everything at high speed. And I think poetry uh, can sort of serve as the brakes for everyday life um, and help us process and really slow down. You know, when you think about a poem, every word is mindfully chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when we write poetry or we read poetry, um, we're reflecting on the everyday life, not just in what's happened, but in our response to it. And it gives us that time to really digest and think about what's gone on. Both at the high level, uh, people write poems about uh, things going on in politics and around the world, but also everyday things like finding a new gray hair or trying to balance, <laughs> you know, family work life. Uh, so I think you know, poetry can really help us not just serve as a record uh, for us, but also serve as a way to process what's going on around us. I'm noticing on Facebook, a lot of my uh, posts now actually are poems. Uh, a lot of poetry showing up and in all different, uh, as you say, all different kinds of subjects that, that um, do speak of everyday life. And then also a lot of reflective uh, items that seem to bring a sense of peace, which is really helpful. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a trend that we're seeing more and more uh, with the advent of technology, people finding a voice that can, uh, you know, for their poetry, a place for it outside of just their journals. Yes, true. Well, we do want to hear from you. We know you're a, a fabulous poet, <laughs> so we'd like to hear uh, from you. We'll hear a little later, too. So 
share a poem with us? Sure. Um, well, the first poem I'll share is called From the Border. And this poem uh, really speaks to what I was saying about being able to process uh, things that we see, uh, you know, in everyday life. Um, in the days and weeks leading up to the, uh, this poem, I kept seeing images and reading mm -hmm. stories about the separation of families at the border. Uh, and, you know, you hear so many things, you see so many things, and I, I didn't really uh, have a chance, um, being bombarded with them, I didn't have a chance to process. And it wasn't until I sat down and um, put my feelings and my thoughts into a poem that I was able to really feel and see and better understand the impact it's had on me at a personal level. Mm. So this is called From the Border. Thank you. I thought I understood what it meant to be afraid until I saw their arms reaching for comfort in a sea of faces, mm. salt and snot streaking their terror on dark skin. No one answers their cries and they're held together by cages, wrapped like someone's leftovers in shiny foil, together alone in the gathering mass of sweat and flesh. I watch from afar, sitting by myself in front of a silver screen in a house by the hills with a cool breeze teasing my hair, my useless tears dripping onto a mountain of laundry, still warm from the dryer. And I worry the same shirt again and again, smoothing the wrinkles from its soft folds as though I were soothing my daughter's brow. Mm, how very touching that is. So it really speaks to me in today's time as well. Mm, thank you so much. And uh, we get to channel a lot of the angst that goes on inside of us through uh, the poetry art form, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. for sure. Well, thank you so much. We do live in interesting times, for sure. So how, how do you see poetry as sort of a cultural uh, form, a cultural tool that we can use in which we, we look for some hope? Uh, I think, you know, poetry is a unique form. We have so many ways of recording what's gone on around us. Uh, you could think about journalism. We have mm -hmm. Facebook. We have uh, essays and articles and blog posts. Uh, there's even fictionalized accounts in novels. Uh, but poetry, uh, you know, it, it really does have a different purpose. It helps us get to the emotional truth. It's less mm -hmm. concerned with facts and figures. So while it's a mirror, it's a mirror of emotion rather than events that have transpired. And I think it's almost a tool by which we can lift the corner of the cultural rug, if you will, and uh, really look past mm. and underneath the social constructs that we often blindly accept and really get to the heart of the matter and, and, and see what's going on inside, what we're feeling. Mm. Um, and so in that way, I think it's a mirror to our emotional responses to things, um, which is uh, a pretty neat and different way to think about uh, our, our reactions in the world around us and, and the events that, that go on. And there are just so many forms that can be employed to do that, right? Absolutely, yes. There's so many different ways. If you're somebody who, you know, a few words can capture it for you, then you have haiku or sing cane. Uh, if you're more like me and a little bit more verbose, we have longer forms. Uh, but the nice thing is there's so many to try from. I think I have a list of 80-something forms oh my. Uh, on which to draw. <laughs> yes. I think I know three or four. <laughs> oh, we have a long way to go. <laughs> a long way to go. Well, as we talk, Poets Laureate are emerging around the country. Uh, particularly at this time. Why do you think that's so? Um, well, as I said before, I think, you know, there's a response to the increased popularity in poetry. Uh, and I think that people are recognizing that poetry can be quite powerful. Mm. Um, it is a way to sort of cut through the fat and get to what's really going on underneath and, and for mm. us to, uh, you know, give our responses in a way that's personal. Um, but personal responses are often what affect change because when we see that impact that, that an event has on one person in, in their personal life, um, it can often help us understand if we want to support what's going on, we want to reinforce it, if we want to reject it. And so instead of telling us how to think, um, Poets Laureate help us think about our responses. Mm. Uh, and I think that that's something mm. that's quite popular. And again, and it's um, definitely growing in popularity, and I think many civic infrastructures uh, want to make sure they're on board uh, with the latest trends. And um, <laughs> you know, I think poets laureate programs are are among that. That's really helped at the national level to have it uh, validated there, and then uh, to move move on out. Yes, and, and I think. Um, it gives a, a focus to a community that does uh, take maybe the spotlight off of some of the political things that might be going on. 
Yes, and, and the American helpful. Academy of Poets also has worked uh, tirelessly to help bring poetry to the forefront and um, support mm. the Poet Laureate program at the national level and the state level. And I think as of right now, there's a f handful of states, if any. Um, last I checked, I think there were five that didn't have a Poet Laureate. Oh, um, and California is actually um, a really neat uh, state in that we have so many local, like uh, Cupertino Poet Laureate, local city and town Poet Laureate. Even Fresno uh, in the last few years has a, a Poet Laureate. Oh, very so good. I think it's good to see it spreading from uh, the more traditionally it's been held in more affluent, uh, you know, coastal areas and it, it's spreading inland. And I think that's wonderful. Yes, it's, um, I see all ages being interested too now, and that's really exciting. Yes, definitely, definitely. The teen uh, poetry scene here is strong, as uh, the school-age children are, are quite into poetry, so it's nice to see. Yes, um, our Rotary Group sponsors a, a teen Rotary, uh, poetry contest, and it's very popular. Uh, when it began, there were just a few, but it's really picked up, and, and now it's quite the competitive thing to do. Yes, I think <laughs> I'm going to be a judge. Oh, very yes. good. Very, yes, so very I get good. to read the talented Thank you for teens. That. Yes. <laughs> That's very good. So in your role as the uh, Poet Laureate, Tell us a little bit about the programs you're using to sort of expand this uh, idea of poetry and uh, some of the teaching methods you're using and some of the venues that you've uh, brought about. Sure. Um, well, one of my goals uh, during my term as Poet Laureate is to really broaden our expectations and understanding of what poetry is. Uh, so the programs I've done, um, in each one, I try to focus on a unique aspect of poetry um, and, and really just, uh, you know, tell people don't worry about everything else, but really focus on this one thing today. We try it on for size. See if you like it. If you don't, uh, that's okay. If you do, great. But uh, it's really the process of, of trying different things that help us grow as people. And that's really the goal, you know, to, to show the power to help people grow through poetry. So to that end, the, the programs I've planned and plan to have um, are varied uh, with both traditional poetry, non-traditional poetry, as well as poetry in unexpected places. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I started out with bringing poetry to uh, story time at the library with the oh, little ones during Groundhog ones. Day. Oh, yes. very good. Uh, so Groundhog Day poetry, not very expected, uh, but it was quite successful. Um, I also hold uh, the Lunch Hour Language Artist Workshop Series uh, twice a year. Uh, this is a series uh, made up of four workshops, and each series focuses on a different aspect of poetry. So this past winter, it was form. We did four forms of poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, this coming fall, it will be the art of recklessness in poetry. Oh, boy. And <laughs> I'm, I'm up for that. <laughs> <laughs> quite fun to be reckless. Uh, and I plan to have sessions again in the uh, fall and winter of 2019. I've also uh, worked with school children uh, doing something I call the program Igniting Your Writing. Mm -hmm. And so in that, yeah. we use poetry as a springboard to really help develop and build academic writing. Um, and I've also uh, worked with teens using song lyrics as the foundation for creating our own unique poems. Um, oh, and, uh, and their own songs or um, ones that uh, they love? Ones that they love. Uh -huh. So they w could either bring their own song lyrics or I had song lyrics there to choose from. And we used those and uh, created our own poetry out of them. And it was absolutely an amazing experience. Uh, the kids are, you know, my breath is always taken away by the talent uh, in, in the young people. And uh, this was no exception. Um, and I'm also meeting with teens this fall at the Coop, in the Cupertino high schools, both to hear about poetry in their lives and what they're looking for, and also mm -hmm. to promote the second annual Teen Poetry Slam that's coming up in October. Um, and I've, I also have workshops I've held at the Quinlan Center in the evenings. I've held morning workshops at the Senior Center. Um, and one of the things I'm, I'm really passionate about is Community Poetry Night. Um, ah. And so Community Poetry Night is a time, um, in addition to having people come who they can read, the community members can read a poem that they wrote. Uh, they can read a poem that they read and they're passionate about. Um, and I also have invited guest speakers. But in addition to that, I look at it as an opportunity to um, get some education in there about poetry. So something different uh, that maybe I, I think that needs to be in the spotlight for a little bit. So, for example, this past winter, I held a program about the Lunar New Year. Uh, uh, yeah. And I used that to give um, a little bit of inside information about Chinese poetry from its inception to modern times. Uh, this spring, mm -hmm. I talked about National Poetry Month and National Poem in Your Pocket, and that will continue each quarter that I'm Poet Laureate. Um, there's also programs that don't fit neatly into any category. Uh, I'm really excited this July. I'm doing uh, sidewalk chalk poetry, 
at a concert series oh, at Monta Vista that'd Park. Be fun. Oh, that'll be very different. Very different. So how will that operate? Uh, so sidewalk chalk poetry is really illuminating poetry. So you're tying in two kinds of creativity, words and art. Um, and so it's great for all ages. Sometimes people think of sidewalk chalk and only little children, but um, mm, I've had this program. It's quite the art form. It is. <laughs> it, I've had this program with adults, uh, well, with children, but the adults actually get more into it sometimes than the kids. Uh, and you can choose a poem that's been, you know, a popular poem that's written, or you can uh, choose your own verse if you want to illuminate your own verse. Um, and it's really almost like drop-in poetry. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can enjoy the concert and you can enjoy a different avenue of creativity while you're there. Um, another program I did that I think was pretty exciting uh, was the Multilingual Poetry Night, Poetry and Prose Night. Um, I held this in conjunction with the Chinese uh, American Alumni Association. Oh, very good. We had people speaking in uh, dozens of languages. It was a very exciting event. Um, but in all of these programs, you know, I really look for uh, one unique thing to focus on uh, to bring out uh, the, the creativity that power and the power that poetry can unleash in all of us. Well, the one I remember so vividly that I took part in was the collage poetry. Yes. Uh, so describe that just a little bit. Sure. Uh, so that program um, is basically thinking about, uh, you know, images and and using those as an impetus to, uh, to create a uh, poem out of other people's words. So you really are the architect that's putting together a poem out of found images and found words. Mm. Um, and it's quite freeing, you know, to rip up paper and glue it down. Yes, it was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have photographs of, of all of the finished products and uh, each one is so unique. And that's what I think is so fun in, in programs like that. You know, people think of poetry and they think of being in high school and having to count syllables and iambic pentameter and yes. uh, it's really not that it, it's really just a way of getting what's on the inside out into the world in some form so if collage poetry works for you and it gets you thinking and <laughs> helps you process something that's on your mind um, you know that's my goal I was a little uncomfortable with it when we started, but you had such a nice process of leading us into what that word or image uh, was. So then when we started looking for it in um, the, the periodicals and, and all, it was easy to find them. Oh, good. Yeah, and, good. Then, uh, and then a picture sort of came and then the collage came. So yes. It was fun. And I think that's what I find, you know, uh, in, I, I'm passionate about teaching. I love teaching. I also teach uh, in many different ways I have for years. And I find that, you know, sometimes people, it, everything you need is already there. You just need someone to help you through the steps. And so um, with poetry, there, it's not an exception. Uh, you know, we have that inside of us and we just sometimes need a little bit of help figuring out what are we really thinking about and processing. And sometimes it surprises us. You go in thinking, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about uh, this argument I have with my, my kids today. Day, and instead you have a collage that talks about your garden, you know, so um, it, you never know what's going to come out, but it, it definitely works if you work the process. It is magic how the yes. emotions do surface through the process. Yes. Yeah. And thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. That's <laughs> really good. So do, um, I wanted to go back, um, a poetry slam. Maybe some of our viewers don't know what a poetry slam is, and, and they're becoming very popular. So explain what a poetry slam oh, is. <laughs> I love poetry slams. I have to admit I have not performed in one, although it is a goal of mine, hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, but essentially, a poetry slam is uh, the art of competitive performance poetry. Uh, so poets come and they um, perform a piece that they've written um, and they're judged. Uh, and it's not just mm -hmm. about what they're saying, it's how they say it. Uh -huh. uh, and they're given a score by audience members um, from zero to 10 typically, uh, and there's a time limit. Uh, so they have to work within the time limit. Um, but most of all, it's a lot of fun. It's a very uh, full body experience. High, high energy. High energy, mm -hmm. very, very much uh, the audience gets into it. If you um, ever have a chance to go, I strongly encourage you to. And I would encourage our community members to come on out to the second annual Cupertino Teen Poetry Slam. Uh, we're very lucky this year to have Santa Clara County Poet Laureate and Slammer Extraordinaire Mike McGee uh, serve as he's, MC. He's coming back. He's coming Good. back, yes. He is quite the energetic guy. <laughs> he's amazing. He's amazing. He's won, uh, you know, awards for slam poetry at, at the international level. So we're very fortunate to have him um, being uh, willing to give us his time and, and come out and support the talented teens. And I guarantee you between uh, the poetry you'll hear and the ever entertaining, you know, Mike McGee, uh, <laughs> it's sure to be a fun night. So October 3rd at the community hall.
I remember it happened so fast. I was trying to keep up with, well, what is the process here and how's it working? Because it really is a fast paced, uh, high energy, fun, fun gathering. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, for the person who's emceeing, it's also a lot of work. You have to tally all of those scores yes, almost quickly, quickly mm -hmm. as people are holding up their uh, audience members typically write their score on a paddle and they hold it up. Um, so it goes very fast, but it's it's a lot of fun. And it, it takes a lot of courage for the teens to get up there and, and do that in, in our, at our slam. So um, immediate score. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, though. It, it is. It is. So thank you for explaining that. So do only Cupertino residents come to your sessions? And, um, you know, how, how does that fit into the community? Uh, not at all. Actually, I've been uh, pleasantly surprised by mm. how far reaching the Cupertino Poet Laureate program really is. I think uh, it's due in large part to the fact that even though this area is uh, big in terms of number of people and numbers of cities and towns, uh, poetry brings us together. And so it's a pretty close knit community. And we have this open door policy. You know, if you are interested in sharing your poetry, if you want to learn about poetry, we want to be in community with you. Uh, so I regularly have people at my programs um, from as far away as Gilroy, Santa Cruz, San Francisco. Um, at some of this winter, I actually had people from outside of the Bay Area, from Southern California. So, uh, you know, we really draw from all over. Although I would say on a regular basis, it's it's a healthy mix of Cupertino residents in the immediate, you know, Saratoga, Los Altos area, mm -hmm. um, San Jose. Um, but the same token, though, I am always happy to bring Cupertino and our poetry programs to other communities. So this past winter, I was a guest artist at the Los Altos Art Docents Meeting, and I oh, brought erasure nice. poetry as an art form. Oh, yes. uh, and then this um, this fall, I will be the featured speaker at the Los Gatos Poetry Lounge. So it's, it's definitely, um, you know, a lot of border crossing uh, and very Which is very important today, I think, that yes. collaboration between our cities, and this is one great way to do it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. For sure. And, and no charge, right? No charge. No charge. All the programs from the Poet Laureate program are free. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of uh, ways to experience poetry in the Bay Area. How do people find out about them? Uh, so I think we're, you know, we, like you say, there are so many ways. We're very lucky. Um, I would encourage people to first and foremost go online. We have, uh, you know, if you Google um, Poet Laureate programs, you'll find them in our area. We're very lucky to have several Poet Laureate programs uh, that offer continued um events and workshops for people. The libraries also offer them. Um, you know, and if you live in the South Bay, we have the Poetry Center San Jose, uh, uh -huh. which uh, has a calendar of events and they regularly offer many poetry related things from readings to workshops. This summer they have an intensive camp for middle and high schoolers. Um, and I think, you know, we can't forget to check our two-year and four-year colleges and universities in this oh, area. Oh, that's right. Of course. Yeah, yeah they mm -hmm. offer um, either free or very low-cost uh, poetry-related or literature-related programs on a frequent basis. Uh, for example, I know San Jose State uh, has a speaker series like TED Talk with poetry, and also uh, they have a festival every year that honors poetry as a vital art form, which I think is really important. Very good. Well, we're getting toward the end. I know our viewers would like to hear a couple more poems pr from you. So please uh, share with us. OK, sure. Um, the first poem I'll share, I wrote again uh, in response to something I saw in the news uh, this past um, fall. It was the uh, Las Vegas shooting that took place. Mm. And so um, I was sort of struggling in that. And I just found a way through my poetry to find some hope and some gratitude. Thanks after the Las Vegas shooting. We sit on the cool rocks and watch the stars swing past the moon, kicking up the dirt, dropping pixelated tears as they go. It's seeing this with you against the silhouette of our grief, the burned dreams, the small mounds of dirt under two large stones, our fingers reaching for each other's in the dark. Their laughter breaks through the glass of our memories, turning our shroud to dust, tugging at our lips and pulling up the corners. They dry our eyes with handkerchiefs sewn from patchwork dresses dyed in kindergarten colors. They join us in the mood shifts, floats us toward the harvest moon, raises our eyes from the dead. I'm watching you smile as you watch their joy and a quiet thrill grabs my throat because I know what we have, though not enough, is enough. And my fingers as they stroke the soft flesh on the inside of your arm whisper thank you. Mm, very nice. Very, very nice. Okay. 
It's so wonderful when we get to a place of gratitude, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And hard to do sometimes. And yes. it's hard to do, as yeah. you say. Sometimes you have to let the rest out before you can get to that point. I know I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the final Beautiful. poem I'll share uh, is a more personal poem that um, I have four daughters <laughs> and they're all teenagers right now. And, uh, you know, your role as a mother changes as your children grow. Oh, and sure. uh, so this poem is um, my way of, of um, thinking about my role with them as they, as they move through life. To my daughters. My eyes, blue and broken like the ocean in a weathered mirror, the folded skin on my knuckles, the hidden birthmark on the nape of my neck under the blonde wisps and waves of my hair, the constellations of freckles on my nose and arms, arms that stretch too long and tall, yours to inherit and share as you age away from me and walk through the forest full of prickly bushes and watchful wolves who want to taste your sweet skin. But I will be there in the shadow blues of your eyes in the twist of your smile, the turn of your head. I know you will push me out. You cannot stop it. Every child does the same, the way the sun must push out the moon. But I will remain. I'll be the word on the tip of your tongue. I'll be the song that worms its way into your ear and makes your feet tap to an unheard beat. I'll be the silence after the rain stops pounding on the trembling window panes. In the gathering shadows of a moonless night, I will be the stars in the Milky Way. For the awe I feel when I see your beauty, my blue-eyed girls, your passion for each other, your love of peanut butter cookies and homemade bread is like my love for you who came from me but are not me and will never end. Mm -hmm. How beautiful. Thank your fortunate daughters, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank well, uh, just a final question. You know, we've got, we live in an area that's rich in technology. STEM is the big thing. But STEAM is becoming even more relevant and important, and that A in STEAM is arts. Yes. So uh, wind up uh, our little time together today, Casey, talking a little bit about the importance of the arts in our world today. Well, I think you're right. You know, we do, especially here in the Bay Area and Cupertino in particular, live in a very STEM heavy, uh, you know, um, city and um, technology is ever present and, and we're moving definitely down the road uh, with more and more technology. But I think as we do that, it's important to uh, be ever more mindful of the integral aspect that art plays in our lives. Um, you know, art is really a mirror into the best part of us. It's yes. a mirror into our emotions and our, our, our reactions to things. It's our joy, our sorrow. Um, and so as we move, you know, into technology, which does take a lot of creativity uh, to do, and I'm a fan of that, you know, um, and I support that, I think it's important to round that out um, and sort of cross train that creative muscle, if you will, with the arts so that as we move down that road uh, and we definitely take with us um, that part of our humanity so that we can have the best future we can. So to that, that end, I'm definitely a proponent of making sure the arts stay alive in our culture and our education system and in our communities. Well, thank you for doing your part. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you for coming, Casey. And thanks to our viewers for watching The Better Part. We invite you to consider being a member. Get your questions answered at Cupertino Senior Center. And remember, you can find this and other broadcasts on YouTube, Roku, and the KMVT viewing area. See you next time on The Better Part.